Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Toogie's Take Podcast. Your stop for weird randomness through our viewer questions, but also a sort of NHL news over the past week. That's kind of what the podcast is in the off season. It's in a, it's, I don't want to say an accumulator, but you know, hey, all the biggest news story in hockey. We're going to talk about it. All the signings, all the not signings. Will Nazem Kadri sign somewhere already? Please. No. My goodness. I am here today alongside Mr. Endo Mills and Mr. Endo Mills only. Sin couldn't make the show this week. He'll be back next time out, which is a bit of a shame because whenever we have Sharks stuff to talk about, he ain't here. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. But Endo, you're here and I'm glad you are. How the heck are you? Uh, I'm doing good. I've had a and I've had an event <clears throat> eventful week so far. Oh, me too. Um, As it turns yeah, out. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about you in a second. We're we're, we're fine. Yeah, you, yeah. Nothing. Nothing crazy happened with you. Don't don't worry about it. Don't talk about it. Don't <sighs> no, say it. Don't either. think it. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been doing a lot of hockey. Um, just chilling, uh, enjoying life. Uh, what yeah. is to. To inform me about a situation I'm not aware of, what is the scene, hockey-wise, in Toronto in the offseason? Because it still feels like you're playing, like, almost every day. Yeah, so it's really weird because this is probably the first year that I've really done the whole rental hockey thing in the in, in August. Uh, it's yeah. also weird, too, because hockey is, like, a, a big thing in Toronto, obviously, because of the no. Leafs. But just um, beer league itself, because a lot of kids who a lot of kids, a lot of men or kids or whatever who um, play overseas or play junior and stuff like that, they just come back home to play and they play a lot of the beer leagues. So mm. like the beer league levels are insanely high in the, in the summertime, like your your B level now has guys who are like former pro or basically going to play pro and yeah. it gets super, super competitive and super like rough. I think just huh. like the other night, I went up against the team and there were all a bunch of overagers from the OJHL. And that's like the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And they won't be able to make playoffs because they're going to be at camp kind of thing. Huh. And like having to go up against that like almost every night, it's like, it's sweet, it's good, but like, can we just well, at least, calm you know, like down? you face that team in the playoffs, they're not going to be as good as they are now. Yeah, they've got like maybe like five other good guys are like gone. Uh, but yeah, uh, this has been the busiest it's been uh since before the obviously the pandemic um but yeah just it's just been crazy uh really busy made a lot of money last month of hockey like holy crap uh but yeah what's going on in your life there (laughs) nothing buddy nothing at all um so we're recording this what friday afternoon it's our first show since uh not last monday but the monday before like at the end of july Um, we did say that, yeah, the podcast is going to be moving to once a week. We didn't really have a set date and this is why, um, we're very busy people as Endo explained, playing a bucket of hockey for a bucket of money. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've just been busy in general, including getting engaged yesterday, which is weird. (laughs) Right. Right. It's the good weird, but as you know, you've, you've, you've already, You've already crossed that hurdle. You understand. But um Oh yeah, I got Oh, if people don't know, me and uh, Paulina and I have been like uh quote unquote engaged for like a year and a half now. Mm. Uh so to like moral of the story, we had a How do I how do I start this? Uh, a good friend of ours, OG Kevin Bacon, throws these mm. power hours where like we you drink and you listen to a video and every minute you take a you take a shot or a drink. I decided they would for my smart ass was to be like, hey, yo, Kev, if you donate, like, if someone donates five gifted subs, I'll take a shot of something. That man made a lot of money that night. He made a lot of money. Yeah. I was passed out, blackout drunk. And then I, as I was as drunk as I was, I proposed to my girlfriend immediately after someone told in the call about how they, they were getting divorced from their husband. They're like, <laughs> man, marriage sucks. And I turn around, I'm like, pulling is so great. Will you marry me? And, <laughs> It was Jesus. bad. It was it was great, but it was bad. So like we've been like technically like maybe possibly, and like 
even when I like asked her like out, I was kind of like, fuck it. Do you want to go out? And she's like, okay, so cool. Sweet. Like everything like I've been asking has been like the, the most weirdest way possible. Like I remember there was a joke in the discord where someone said like, no, it was during a stream. Someone said like, oh, I'm a terrible date, but I'm a decent boyfriend. It's like, what do you mean by that? It's like, I'm, I'm the worst person to ever date. You could ask Polina and she's like, he was terrible. He sent me mixed signals the entire fucking way completely. But I, I guess I'm here. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't say it, it's, I don't know. I don't know. For me, it's a similar thing of like, this doesn't feel like, like, it feels like we've missed steps along the way, but at the same time, it's like, who gives a shit? If it works. It works. Yeah. So. I moved in year one. So like, there you go. I there mean, yeah, shit. I don't know, man. I gotta. I I think we could sit here and rightfully win over good fiance points by just being there like, "There you go." Aren't our partners great? But at the same time, we don't want to bore people <laughs> to death. Although I'm sure in the next podcast we will get a crap load of questions in regards uh, to all of that. Uh, I will say though, uh, viewer questions wise, we did get these questions. Uh, on Wednesday, it's when we were originally supposed to record the podcast, but then some things and stuff happened. And Thursday, I was pretty busy. So, yeah, some of these might end up being a little bit out of date. We'll see. And I do wish, of course, Tim was here for some of these, but again, it's all good. Before we get to those, though, of course, as always, we need to mention this podcast brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. And what if the you fuck? haven't you got a shirt? heard, oh, you yeah, got a shirt? Oh, yeah. I've had this Manscaped just, shirt for like a year. I just got the sprinkle deodorant that I need to apply. Dude, it says Manscaped on the back. Your balls will thank you. I'm not allowed to wear it out of the house. <laughs> What's the point of it then? That's not fair. She's like, you can keep the shirt, but you can't wear it out of the house. I know people. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. You need to contact them and get me one of those shirts. Holy, I want to wear it there everywhere. But if you haven't heard already, everybody, with Manscaped, it's smooth sack summer. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're scaped from pubes to bum. That's right. This is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with Manscaped. The leader oh, in Below the Belt Grooming is making sure we all have a ball, all caps, this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Dive headfirst into smooth sack summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using our code TUGIE. That's T-O-U-G-I-E at manscaped.com. Code TUGIE. 20% off free worldwide shipping. Manscaped. Smooth sack summer. <laughs> Endo, any questions or do you uh you think you got it? About Manscaped? Um no, no, I think we're good. I, there you I, go. I I think we're good. <laughs> I could I couldn't tell you about that little mini ad read because I'm like, there's no way he won't crack when he hears ball, smooth ball sack boy summer, summer for the first time. <laughs> Oh, with man. that we'll go over to our viewer questions again the link to my discord is in the description whether or not you are listening or watching on the youtube side of things join the discord go to the viewer questions section and of course before every podcast i'll tag everybody in that server and say hey question time these beautiful people answered for this week we'll start off with ender because he knows i'm an f1 fan obviously you knew this was going to get asked oscar piastri where does he go in 2023? Well, since Wednesday, we have kind of gotten clarification on this ridiculous amount of F1 controversy, essentially. So to explain, first we have Aston Martin. They are the green cars in F1, for those who aren't overly right. familiar. And their older driver, Sebastian Vettel, multiple-time F1 champion, announced he joined Instagram. And it's like, hey, I got an announcement. The next day, he's like, hey, I'm retiring. Thanks for the thanks for the follows on Instagram. <laughs> like, what a Chad. What, what a fucking Chad. It was beautiful. But he announced his retirement. Then you have Alpine. Essentially the French team. It's their colors. And Alpine is like, oh, that's cool. Oh, shit, it's not cool. Because our older driver, another former F1 champion and Fernando Alonso, he is going to replace Vettel at Aston Martin. So now we have an open spot with our team. Right. But aha, we got it. We're bringing, no. in, we're bringing in one of the best young drivers in the world. F2 champion, second tier AHL comparison, if you want to do that for those. Uh, to explain it to X-Tech in hockey terms, he won a Calder Cup. And we're going to bring him in. And then the third team involved in this is McLaren. 
in their beautiful orange, where they said, no, you don't actually get to do that. Alpine announced, we have Oscar Piastri. And then Oscar Piastri said, nope, you don't actually. (laughs) And it's pretty much all but confirmed he is going to sign up with McLaren with Daniel Ricciardo of McLaren of Drive to Survive sees one fame pretty much getting the boot. Although it does mean he's still going to get paid a ton. So basically, F1 silly season rivals any other silly season in any other sport whether it be the football transfer window, all the other trade deadlines, free agency, F1 can pretty much match it in terms of drama, and I'm here for it. My hope is that this means that Daniel Ricciardo isn't out of F1 entirely because he is a tremendous personality. Pretty much watch Drive to Survive Season 1, which is F1's like behind-the-scenes show. You watch that on Netflix, you will find it impossible to not love Daniel Ricciardo after watching that first season. So we'll see what happens there. All I know is F1's fucking awesome. And I should say, in terms of F1, hopefully we uh, we get to do some co-op, uh, some online lobbies this weekend. Uh, they announced with F122 that they are uh, testing out their crossplay future, both this weekend and next. I actually won't be home next weekend, so hopefully this weekend we get to play some F1 with people uh, that have F122. But, yeah. Ender, there you go. I don't think Endo has an opinion on F1. I think you're, like, you're aware of it, but in terms of following it, I think you're just like, ah, I don't know. You're playing too much hockey. I beat you in a race once in F1 2021, and that's all. Yeah. I, that's my claim to fame. There you go. <laughs> that was That's my claim to fame. That's the only time. I peaked right there. Peak. That's all it is. <laughs> As opposed to my claim to fame, where I spent the entire race cursing somebody out, you know, only to discover I actually finished top three and didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god, can we talk about that a little bit? Can we if you want to? I think I summed it up pretty well, but Oh my god. So someone in chat, um I, I can't remember what exactly the whole scenario, but it was I a do. dude in chat was like flaming you for some fucking reason. And it's like, like about NHL a penalty. 22 overall. Oh my god, it was the fuck Oh my god yep. That's what it was. <laughs> It was over fucking overall, like one overall point. He's like, he's been bothering you for like a fucking week and a half about like an overall, like 7 a.m., like waking you up in the morning, like his fucking your hotel service when you ask go downstairs. Sorry, you started just, you know, started to sing Friday there. (laughs) And he just kept going and he kept going and you're like, shut the fuck up. And then he goes on Twitter and he's like, man, I can't ever support this guy. And (laughs) it's. And they're fun. like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, you, you'll you'll wake up one day. You're just sheep. He's like, <sighs> he's like, what? <laughs> wake up, sheeple. <laughs> oh, God. Sheep. That was, that was beautiful. Wake up, sheeple. Great. That's, that's, a, that's a shout for episode title. Our second question comes from Hawks. In honor of the unfortunate passing of Vin Scully, if you had to make a Mount Rushmore of sports commentators, who would it be? And who are your two to three honorable mentions? Mm. So I feel like, you know, if you were to talk about this from like the North American perspective, right. um, like there's the who you legitimately think deserve the nod is the best of all time. And then there's personal favorites. Right. So I feel like that's, you know, it, it depends on who you ask, essentially, and yeah. particularly what sports they follow. Um, I don't think anyone will deny it. Like Vin Scully, again, he passed away uh, three days ago now, 94 years old. Spent 67 years commentating for the Brooklyn slash L.A. Dodgers from 1950 to fucking 2016. You're never going to see a career like that again. It's impossible. You'll never see that again. Um, And then, you know, like I said, you kind of get into the conversation of, you know, if you go best of all time or like who deserves not, like I'll throw out Al Michaels. Like, if I were to do that, like, okay, the undisputed, no doubt, not doing personal favorites. Uh, Al Michaels here in the U.S. has that as well. It's going to be easier for us, though, to do, I think, personal favorites. So, you know, obviously with the Mount Rushmore, you're talking, you know, more than two. But even, like, I don't know. And your favorite commentators of all time. I don't even care if you just name your favorite at this point. But it's just the idea. This question is like, hey, shout out your favorite commentators ever because... Yeah, and I feel like we get this question quite a bit, but yeah, 
time wise, it's like, okay, we can we can do this again. I feel like you get this a lot because of your ties with Sports Gamer. Yes, um, sir. More like I'm I'm sort of kind of getting into that like realm of that uh that uh field too. Um I think the ones that are more like iconic to me are like I think Dick Vitali. I don't know why. Yeah, like, just because no, like I... the 41 year of just doing college es- uh, uh, ESPN. Yeah. I mean, it also is because we're playing college basketball too. I'm just like, you mm-hmm. know, like the vibe is just like the iconic like sound. Um, I don't know names. No. Uh, the the one who was was like calling both games at the same time. I can't remember. Oh, Gus Johnson. Yeah, Gus Johnson. Yeah. Um, uh, that one dude who does the football one, uh, he's also on the Madden package for Madden uh, NFL, or EA Madden. Oh, just, you mean John Madden? <laughs> no, not 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 just John Madden. I, I know John Madden, but I know like <laughs> fuck it. I don't like. I'm telling you, it's the thing. I don't know names besides like the Canadian ones. Were like you know just the fucking Arnold Ryan singing the Benino call. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's iconic. Like, well, uh, do you yeah. put do you put Bob Cole up there as a Canadian? I, th- yeah, I think uh, Bob Cole is in his peak because the last like I think the last like two years it, he just became a senile mess. Respect <laughs> to him, but just I don't know what it is with like Canadians and not wanting to just like go out like on a high note. It's we guys got to keep going until we're just kind of like so the like, wheels fall off the bag until yeah. you say something racist and ruin your legacy, <laughs> Don. <laughs> It's true. Like that's what happened. Um, I, I will shout out uh, Gary Thorne, of I course, say, for the yeah. hockey and the baseball side of things. Absolutely amazing, um, dude. There's so many. I honestly, my personal Mount Rushmore does have Jack Edwards because I love how riled up he gets. Like I would rather have a commentator that pisses people off than a commentator where people can't name one memorable quote. And like what sealed it for me was Jack Edwards when the sorry to bring up 2013. Go for it. The Bruins make the comeback. They pulled out the sword and slayed the dragon. <laughs> like the Toronto Maple Leafs, this James Reimer in goal. They slayed the dragon. Like just fucking hilarious. Like at like I think I think I was listening to an episode of the Steve Dangle podcast like just a few years ago. So that would have been like 6 7 years later and they still brought up that clip of how fucking stupid it is, which is just mwah. like absolutely love it. Um god, yeah, there's there's a lot, man. There's a lot of names I could bring up for that just because there are there are a ton. But uh anybody in the world if well, anybody in the US at least. I mean, worldwide obviously opinions will change, but yeah, Vin Scully should be up there. He is the best baseball commentator of all time and literally has a career that can never be replicated. We'll move on. RG Dust. Would you rather get a million dollars right now in cold hard cash or you get $5 every time you blink, but you only collect the money every five years? I need I'll that take million. $100 million right now. <laughs> I'll take $100 million. I'm I'm going to move... Like, like you're getting married in like a year. I'm moving relatively soon. So I need that money like fucking stat pronto. Because what Oops. you do, you grab that hundred mil. You throw it into a fucking, you throw it in the stock. You, you take the tax off of that hundred mil. And, you know, you just, you just ride out with it, man. Like completely. So Invest I looked this up. You get $5 every time you blink. So the average person blinks 19,200 times a day, which means you'd earn $96,000 a day. So 365, you would earn 35 million a year. Like that's not bad. Obviously, so 35 yeah. million a year, every 5 years you get 175 million. But I want. But you have to now. wait five years to collect the first five. Exactly. What if I? What if I die? What if I die in two? You know. Well, your 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 newly crowned wife <laughs> will take right. the money. <laughs> like if I get a hundred million now, though, like fuck, I could live the rest of my life off a hundred million. You know. Yeah. I don't need this fucking bogus. Like, okay, I'm 28 years old now. Right. Say I live. 
I mean, God, even if it's only another 10 years, like, yeah, that's 350 million. What the fuck am I going to do with $350 million? Like, personally, and I already know this, like, if I had that amount of, like, absurd generational wealth, I would help out as many people as I possibly fucking could. Like, oh, easy, yeah. you, easy for you to say. You're not some billionaire fucking blah, blah, blah. Billionaires are fucking terrible people. But I could still help out a lot of people with $100 million. I get the idea of like, oh, shit, but you could have all this money if you just wait. But fuck that. <laughs> people need money now. Enough. Yeah, people need money now. They need help immediately, not like down the line. Like they right. need that, that money like pronto. So I would definitely, like, grab the money now. Yeah, like, I'm not struggling, but $150 takes away any worries I have, you know? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Or $100 whatever the fuck it was, like... Fucking $1 takes down my my struggles. I can live off $1 million for the rest of my life. I'm very low maintenance. I'm very low maintenance, like, flat out. You feed me, you make sure I can get the hockey, that's all I care about. That, that's my relationship based on if I can play hockey or not. That's when I'm not going to have kids. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? Fuck, fuck it. Them kids, I'm playing Michael it. Jordan, Endo Mills. Fuck Basically. Kids. <laughs> my whole thing is like, if I if I get kids, there goes me being able to play beer league. There goes my, my dream of not being able to make my dream. These okay? kids Listen. ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> Ankle biters. Man. From uh, from Scroopy Noopers, what is your favorite racing song? A song that gives you serious case of lead foot while driving. Mm. Hmm. Um. Back streets back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you don't want to cruise down the highway just going everybody. Yeah, of course you do. Like, uh, like there's just a racing song would probably be. Um, hold on, what song is this by Queens of the Stone Age? There's a lot of them, so it's tough. There's, I know that, like a doy, um, but uh, what is it? There's so many fucking songs. It was from Villains. Uh, okay, reload the fucking page. God damn it, I can't remember the, the name of the song. Aren't they? They have some ex- band? Ups- Queens. Yeah, I love Queens of the Stone Age. Well, then think of their damn it, song. I I can't think of it because they have so many like so. There's like. Um, when they did Desert Sessions, um, when they did one Royal Blood, where it was like Crucifier, that one's a good song for, for driving with. Uh, but I can't find the actual like album that it's from. I'll also from shout Britain. out Cruel Summer by Banana Rama. <laughs> is, is that the is that the one you listen to? Is this like the guy who was really really bad? Like, uh, what was the one where the guy was like screaming, but it was like really really bad? God, I don't remember. There was so. Oh, many- Fucking that's a, the song I mentioned was in the first Karate Kid. <laughs> oh, that's all, I, that's all I remember. Oh man. And don't we need a song? Meme or real? Yeah. Um, come back to me after the next question. I'll have it for you. Jesus. Anything by Queens of the Stone Age. There you go. Our last yeah. question comes from Piney. Congrats. Well, son of a bitch. Congrats. Each of you have been granted. <laughs> A new expansion team on the Three Ice, also known as the, the Dice Thrice League. The three of you, well, fuck, have a three-round draft to get your team started. The caveat, only animals can be drafted. So, Endo, we have to craft our dream 3v3 hockey side, but we can only use animals. Now, given that this is hockey... I'm going to pick creatures that have opposable thumbs. So we win. Like, My goalie might is like, a whale. I, I want a cheetah for the speed and a whale for... Well, okay, so we could have a whale for the goalie. Yeah. That way nothing goes in. It's a fucking whale. How big's the goal going to have to be for it to actually be a goal? It's impossible. So yeah, we'll have a whale as a goalie. Um... I mean, only animals. He didn't say it had to be different animals. How about we just have a whale and goal and, like, three gorillas? Or maybe, like, a gorilla as a defenseman. Because he's bigger yeah. and he can, like, cronwall people. <laughs> Although, like... Just, if you have, like... Cron-wall. Like, what is... Okay, hold on. Hold on. 
What primate has the longest arms? Is it an orangutan? No, 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 no. We, we have. We're gonna put um our, our, our We're gonna have a chimpanzee as a as a forward, and it's yep. gonna be MVP, most valuable primate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we're gonna have Air Bud as our as our winger. Well, no, because he doesn't have thumbs. Well, listen, they made that Air Bud hockey movie work, okay? I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's an ape. It has opposable thumbs. So we Fair have enough. we have MVP as our as our primary center. Yeah. Then we have like a Gibbon as the winger because he's got this right. crazy reach. Or ooh, or we could go with the uh, the gorilla to be like a net front presence. Right. Park his ass in front. Or you could go with the baboon, and he could park his red ass in front. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a gibbon who has the longest uh, arms relative to uh, body size for any primate. And then he's just got that super long reach, so he'd be a good defender. So I think we go with MVP at center, a gorilla as the winger, Mighty Joe Young. We got Mighty Joe Young as the winger, and then we have a gibbon as the defender with the whale as the goalie. And our coach is the murder muppet. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. I, was, to I had to throw it in there. there. <laughs> I had to. God, beautiful. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, that's the cheat code. Like, okay, pick the biggest fucking creature you can to be the goalie, and then yeah, like pick an animal with the posable thumbs. Like, what is the cheetah gonna hold the fucking hockey stick in its mouth? That's not practical to shoot a puck. Like, he'll be fast, but can he fucking dangle? I don't think so. He can dangle the fuck out of a cheetah. <laughs> can that be the episode title? <laughs> can dangle, can a, dangle cheetah. a cheetah. Oh, there we go. Oh, man. Beautiful. All right, I think we got a great team, right? Yeah, beautiful team. Checkmate, Piney. Checkmate. Come at us. We want to hear your 3v3 teams, everybody. And we'll see you out there on the ice. When our silverback rips your fucking nuts off. <laughs> Join the Discord. It's... Get your questions in, stupid, or as serious as you want them to be. And we love you for it. And what were you going to say? I, was... <laughs> I have no idea anymore. Fair enough. <laughs> Perfect. Everything is going to be fine. Uh, so with that, we actually will move in half an hour into the show just about into actually talking about hockey. <laughs> It's the off season, everybody. What are you going to do? This is what happens every damn time. Uh, quickly, wanted to note uh, the more serious topics that came up. Obviously, the Hockey Canada stuff, more stories continuing to come to the surface, uh, including Katie Strang's story on who is now former Michigan head coach Mel Peterson's toxic behavior, which included uh, active retaliation against former team captain goaltender Strauss Mann, uh, who attempted to actually have it be a fun place to play, uh, and man was forced name? to leave the program. I believe Strauss Mann just signed recently with uh, with the Sharks, Barracuda. no less. So, yeah. yeah, fuck fuck that guy. Fuck Mel Pearson. He's out of there. And uh, hopefully the enablers that continue to allow him to be the head coach of this Michigan program are also ousted. Um, again, this is the type of shit where... Like, look, in terms of this topic, like, you'll have some people, like, you will you will have defenders of this guy to just be like, this is just cancel culture. No, this isn't cancel culture. This is you getting to deal with the consequences of your shitty fucking actions. Cancel culture, to me, is the, the overly petty, like, okay, you're nitpicking type of stuff. This isn't Nick. This isn't nitpicking. This guy's a piece of shit. He shouldn't have had this job. He doesn't anymore. Happy day. I don't care if he's a two-time NCAA champion as an assistant coach. Your accomplishments don't mean shit. You're a piece of garbage. Get the fuck out. Hockey's not the place for you. Fuck off. Yeah, 100%. I was just looking up some of the stuff that um, uh, from the uh, the report here that was mm -hmm. on SJ Hockey Now. Uh, just retired Bancroft's mistreatment of female staff members, inability to willingness to hold Bancroft accountable for his act, for his conduct, Pervasive fears among both student athletes and staff members of retaliation for raising issues. Yeah, so basically, uh, Strauss Mann apparently well, tried to basically use he's the captain yeah. as a goalie too. Like that's even that's even something better. Um, chip on my shoulder for that. But uh, <laughs> you know, just and he tries to make the culture better and basically just gets shoved off for that. Like, 
Like you're not, you're, you're this, this is where, uh, I don't want to get personal with this. I recently became like a licensed coach, uh, right before the hockey can of the stuff came out and stuff like this coming out and becoming more prevalent in the hockey world. And it's, it's always been there. That's the thing. But now that it's more popular around us, it, it really makes me concerned with how I'd be able to get parents trust with their kids in terms yeah, of stuff I mean, like this because you're supposed the to be these basically... shitty fucking people ruining it for everyone else exactly like i'm supposed to be someone who's to help your their child develop but you're seeing all these other stories going around about all these egregious conduct and stuff happening to either two kids or just stuff to be nailed by the coach and it's just breeding extra like hostility and toxicity in those kids. And like, it makes you really worried if because of all that shit's happening around, is there going to be a stigma towards another generation of coaches because of all this stuff and all that stuff. And it's just, it's gross. Yeah. I mean, it's the idea of parents right now, especially those like, you know, obviously it's a concern everywhere. But especially mm-hmm. right now, if you're, if Endo, for example, if you and Paulina had a seven, eight year old child, maybe even a little bit earlier, yeah, could you feel one hundred percent confident in dropping them off for hockey? No, no, not whether at all. it be like ev- like so many different aspects of what the culture's been. How can you how could you possibly feel 100% confident as a parent like yeah my child is safe from mm-hmm. the coach from their fellow players i mean especially as they get older i mean jesus christ like that you know all the stories we've heard about the hockey canada side of things and the hazing like oh, how yeah. could you feel 100% safe for your kid regardless of what age they're at like i don't i don't think you can and that's right. a, that's the thing too where like I, it's it's understandable why these parents are going to feel like an extra level of precaution uh, into like knowing if that person you're working with is actually going to do something stupid because yeah, there's background checks, but like you, you never know what could happen in general. I mean, fuck like, face scary- Cuddy, as I like to call him from the Kyle beach uh, situation, he was allowed to continue to coach and then something else happened. Oh, exactly. And it, it just kept yeah. going. It's like, when do you deal with the problem until like, do you deal with the problem now? Of course you should deal with it now before it becomes an even bigger issue than the long run. Like, ahem, ahem. We have stuff going on in hockey Canada. We have stuff going on over there in the, in with the Chicago Blackhawks and all that stuff. It's like, you, you got to deal with this when it happens. You can't just push it off, shove it away because it becomes a bigger issue. So, Again, we'll continue to talk about that stuff as it comes up. And, you know, I I don't want to say, unfortunately, it continues to come up because it's not an unfortunate thing. It is continuing to be a good thing that stuff like this is coming up uh, because this is how change happens. So, as you know, frustrating yep. as it can be as a hockey fan to be like, oh, my God, another fucking story. No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Shine a light on people like Mel Pearson who do, you know, who flat out do not have a spot in hockey anymore and shouldn't have. Uh, it shouldn't have had to come to this. Uh, the other right. thing that came up that people were like, hey, are you going to talk about this? Was uh, Bobby Ryan's very public sobriety slip up. Um, and look, I don't have anything to really comment on about this. Like, it is great to see the big rallying of support around him, but it is such a personal thing. And it looks like he's taking it with the right strides and moving forward the right way. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, I come from a family that's been pretty heavily affected by people with substance abuse issues um right. all you can do is just root for the best so i think you know a lot of the way the people like obviously like you had some people who tried to essentially make light of it and it's like no it's not the way to do it like i think you saw the right side of the the positive reaction that there should have been where the hockey world essentially properly rallied around bobby ryan um it's all I really got to say about it. It's just, it is a very personal thing where really all you can do is just root for the best for the guy. Yeah. There was a lot of support from a lot of people about this stuff because it's never, it's never about, it's never about longevity. It's about day at a time. Yeah. Just, just every day is a new day and just working it that way. 
that's something that not even like I don't I never recovered from anything, but just in general, that's a lifestyle that I personally go by is like, you know, take things a day at a time, work things on it that way, and you live a healthier life instead of trying to think of other stuff. In terms of other things that came up, uh, this one thankfully less heavy. Uh, well, actually, in a sense, you know what? Let's reorder these a little bit because the story came out on uh, Yahoo.ca. Uh, Max Pacioretty was interviewed about his time with the Vegas Golden Knights, which, again, is still yep. shockingly over. What the fuck? Um, and he kind of mentioned the, the organization in general, that there was this real sense of a lack of accountability. Um, and this was a, and the heavy excerpt of the article. And again, how I wish Sim was here for this because he would just be He'd go off on a wonderful tangent. I should have brought um, popcorn. Yeah, so here, here's just an excerpt from the article. Patch already admitted he experienced a weird feeling shortly after being traded to Vegas in 2018. It was something he hadn't previously encountered in his NHL career. When I first got to Vegas, it was weird. There was, like, no accountability. And I'm not talking about in the team. I'm talking about, like, ever. You couldn't feel pressure coming off of anyone else, from the coach to management. Um, Patch already took it upon himself to demand better of everyone in the locker room, once the team left, you know, end of the season, they missed the playoffs. I mentioned at the end of the year that no one's really holding us accountable. If we have a bad year, the city would be half on fire in Montreal. Here in Vegas, it's 80 degrees, it's sunny, we're getting our car washed, getting our organic food, and going to play golf. I was kind of like, we've got to place this thing a little bit better amongst each other. I don't want to say it was a country club, but you have no one from the outside holding you accountable. Is this not exactly what everyone thought was going on in Vegas and what we thought would go on in Vegas? Just the idea of like, I'm going to fucking go. I'm going to go to Vegas. I'm going to play professional hockey. I'm going to make a shitload of money. Who cares? And according to Max Patch already, that is the exact attitude that this team has. That also might be the reason why um, their first year was so successful. Yeah. Because no one cared. No right. one it's not, not, not that they didn't care, the professional athletes, but that they just kind of walked in there, did what they did, and just kind of left and like just walked out and did, was like, we're like kings essentially. Um, I, 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 I think I, I don't want to say I called this, but I said they're, they, they're the Vegas high rollers. They only care when they win. And when they don't win, they just kind of like, eh, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. Like, it, I, I don't know how that franchise is going to be sustainable in, in that. Matthew. Oh, I know it's sustainable because everyone goes to Vegas. Vegas is the one thing you go to. It's like, oh, let's go to Vegas. Let's try and win, win big and then lose all your money. I remember saying this before when they announced the whole franchise was going to happen. I said that it was going to be a tourist team and essentially that people are going to go to that. People are going to go to that, that organization. They're going to go watch it in T-Mobile Arena, sit down when their team is on the road playing there. For the first few years, it's going to be, oh, we have a whole nice home crowd because it's nice and fresh. But I guarantee you in the next like two, three, four years, if they keep going on the same trajectory, you're going to see a lot more fan jerseys inside there. It's going to be a lot similar to what it was like over in Arizona for a bit where you'd have just it, – it'll be basically what the Leafs are to Buffalo but for the rest of the league hmm. where Buffalo didn't have a lot of seats for the past few years because – who knew that all your season hold ticket holders would be in fucking Toronto or in Canada? Mm. Like I, I have a feeling that's going to happen and like, you can hold me on that hold to my grave, but I have a feeling it's something that's going to happen. The, one of the top responses to that on Reddit, at least um, this person said, Oh, in terms of patch Reddy's quote, if we have a bad year, well, it's Vegas, it's sunny. We're getting a car washed, we're getting food. This person had a great point. That's basically a free agent bait for 90% of the players out there. Wow, we can suck, get paid millions in a tax-free state, have all the resort attractions of Vegas, and the fans don't care? Sign me up. Which yeah. is true, except, you know, you might just get traded out of nowhere, no matter who the fuck you are. So not quite a perfect setup for the players, but traded for enjoy nothing. your time while you're there, right? No pressure. So, yeah, Vegas just continues to really lose pretty much any and all goodwill that they've that they've had initially and i feel like in a sense seattle 
in some ways, like people are just like, oh, we, we don't want to root for you because we don't want you to become Vegas. At the same side, some people or on the other side, some people are rooting for Seattle even harder now to be like, please don't be Vegas. So it's it's weird, man. First five years of the Vegas Golden Knights. It's been a really interesting time that we're going to talk about as hockey fans for essentially the rest of our lives, um, especially if they do end up completely imploding or eventually winning. Like, they are one of the most interesting teams to watch right now in the NHL, uh, even when they don't make the playoffs. If not the NHL, just sports in general, just how it's been over there. And I know Vegas has been a big proponent of, oh, we're going to get a whole bunch of franchises. We got the Raiders and we got all this. And it's like, okay. It just sounds like it's it, it. I don't know. It just sounds like you're trying to be like a tourist city, and it, and it is a tourist city, and yeah. you can't operate your teams in that same sort of mantra. I'm no business expert, but I know if your most of your income for a sports franchise relies on your fans, if that team play goes down, like what are you gonna do? No business expert. Yet you demanded I call you Mister Big Business for the first uh, three months that we met. Did I? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like well that sounds like something i'd say i don't remember it, it does shit. sound like something i would say <laughs> oh i think okay. i know what you're talking about oh god we'll move on um the adidas deal is is done after the 23 24 season adidas has chosen not to renew their nhl uniform and apparel deal again beyond 2023 24 endo your thoughts um Because for me right now, like, the jury's kind of out. Like, I get that a lot of people didn't like Reebok. I don't mind Reebok. I don't think their jerseys were necessarily terrible. Like, yes, the initial, like, Reebok edge deal, and it's like the Blues ended up getting some pretty shitty uniforms with, like, the vertical striping from, you know, like, like, yeah, there there were some weird ones. At the same time, not every jersey Reebok made was terrible. And I feel the same way about Adidas. Yeah, they had some damn good jerseys. They went back to some classic looks for some teams. Uh, But not every Reebok jersey, or uh, excuse me, Adidas jersey, I think, has been amazing. I think there are some jerseys you can look at as like, what the fuck is that? Uh, Some of the reverse retros especially come to mind. Um, You had a phenomenal Dallas Stars uh, Winter Classic jersey in 2020. That was ruined by a logo that literally reads the STDers because instead of an A, they put a star for the A. Like, just I will, I love that jersey, but I can't buy it because the logo's trash. Just, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Like, as long, I think most people agree with this, as long as it doesn't full time become fanatics actually making the jerseys, I think we're okay. But, yeah, like this is a wait and see type of thing. Like I'm not up in arms because Adidas is is leaving after a couple of years because again they they don't have a perfect track record, but no jersey provider does. So so why do people want fanatics or why are people saying fanatics because they make all the no so the people don't want fanatics because fanatics have been in charge of the secondary like the uh, not the authentic right, but the yeah. replica jerseys and the quality is pretty shit. They're not mm. bad for the price, essentially, but for the most part, the quality is pretty shit. Um, but so again, if, my, if you're just yeah. a freaking casual sports fan, you want a jersey, you're not going to care. Uh, but that, that goes with most things, right? Like, yeah, people buy shit all the time that's trash, but you don't necessarily know it's trash unless you're super in to the idea. Um, yeah, Fanatics, I think they have... I'm not sure how long their their deal is with the NHL, but I mean they make shit for fucking everything at this point. Um, but yeah, people I think are just more worried about quality control. Essentially, if Fanatics were to get the uh, the full time option to make NHL jerseys, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, issues like, with Fanatics. <laughs> I I don't think Fanatics is going to get it. I think what's going to happen is it's going to go to like. I think it's going to be CCM just because they have experience with the AHL mm. and yeah, using AK similar is there for the ECHL as well. Uh, no, they, what do they use? I think they use, um, they use AK. I believe it is athletic knit. Yeah. Athletic knit. They use AK. Yeah. 
AK made some sick jerseys because all the Dude, all the those, ECHL ECH- ones are all. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that. sorry to interrupt you. Some of those ECHL jerseys though are fucking sick. They're so. Dude, <laughs> I'm so mad that the Brampton Bees folded. Not only because I was gonna try out for their thing as like an e bug or whatever, mm. but um, but just in general, like their their style and everything was just just chef's kiss. Like they're. I, I don't think there's a single jersey in the ECHL that I don't like. There's a couple that aren't as impressive, but it is tough to name. Like, okay, what in your opinion are five terrible ECHL jerseys from this past season? That'd right. be a tough question for me to answer. I don't think there are five. And yeah, CCM, yeah. like you said, but the AHL, I don't think they're bad either. Mm-hmm. So again, they won't have perfect track records, but the people kind of getting up in arms about this, I'm like, ah, I, I can't relate. Sorry, I don't view it as this yeah. gigantic deal or this like tragic loss for the hockey world that Adidas. I mean, yeah, it is a bit of a loss in a sense that it's it's Adidas. It's a big brand that's walking away, but it's not gonna destroy the world. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of people immediately go to that like doom and gloom style of, oh no, what. What are they possibly going to do? They're going to sign up with a different provider. Like, that's, there you go. There's your answer. Life yeah. goes on. So. Although I do like the, as someone who's worn, like, the Adidas practice jerseys and, like, uh, authentic replicas when I play in net, mm-hmm. those are, they feel very, and only, is it, it's very form-fitting, but very just nice and light at the same time, too. Like, yeah, I don't know. No issues at all. Makes, terrible jerseys but yeah i don't know like unless you go back to like pre-04 or pre-05 lockout i don't necessarily think there are any like jerseys that are super uncomfortable or terrible to wear like i have you know i have had like adidas made in canada's i have had reebok mic's and yeah like they're not like none of them have been abysmal but Mm -hmm. again people like to be reactionary don't they (laughs) uh speaking of reactionary i guess again sin damn you the san jose sharks uh, announced that they are retiring patrick marlowe's number on saturday february the 25th against chicago he will be the first shark in club history to have their number retired and yeah obviously right like i mean you talk about san jose sharks who should have their number retired? He is top of the list. That's it. Yeah, he is top of the list. Like as much as you, uh, you know, can also look at Joe Thornton. Um, you know, I think eventually, you know, Joe Pavelski almost played a thousand games at the club. I don't know. Then you kind of get in the secondary territory of like Logan Couture, Brent Burns. Looking at the top ten games played list, Mike Rathje, Scott Hannon. Justin Braun, like guys over 600 games. It's, uh, and Mark Edward Vlasic, in fairness, although his career at the end is spiraling a bit, but Marla Vlasic and Thornton um, are the top three. Thornton has 1,104 games played as a Shark. Vlasic, 1,161. So again, 1,100 for both of them. 1,607 games as a Shark for Patrick Marlowe. Literally 503 games more than Joe Thornton. He was always going to be the first Shark to have his number retired. He is the franchise's leader in games played, the franchise leader in goals. He has 522. Next highest, Joe Pavelski at 355. So he's 167 over. Uh, Next closest for active players is Logan Couture who is at 296. So he is 226 goals away from Marlowe. Um, Marlowe is second all-time in assists behind Thornton, but Marlowe is the all-time points leader for the team with, again, almost over 100 points more. Actually, no, with, uh, Jesus Christ, Marlowe, 1,111 points as a Shark. Thornton was 56 behind him. Like, you look at the all-time leader, it's pretty much Patrick Marlowe and Joe Thornton in every offensive category. Um, like obviously, like penalty minutes, he's not going to be there. Uh, all-time hat tricks, he's not there. Do you know who the all-time leader in hat tricks is for the San Jose Sharks? Brett Burns. 
Jonathan Chichu. What? So there are three players tied for second place. Hurdle, Pavelski, Marlowe. All three have five career hat tricks for the Sharks. Jonathan Chichu scored nine hat tricks as a Shark. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Talk about one of the craziest careers of all time. Jonathan Chichu was only in the league for seven years. Yeah, that's... <sighs> that's madness. That's crazy. So we could wax poetic about Patrick Marlowe all day, especially if Sim was here. I think we'll bring it up again to get Sin's thoughts next week. But then there's the interesting one that we certainly can speak on, and you know what Sin's opinion would have been on this. I think it would have been laughing. The LA Kings are going to be retiring Dustin Brown's number on February 11th, which is okay. Captain yeah. of the team when they won two cups. Mm -hmm. But they are also giving him his own statue outside of, I refuse to call it by its new name, outside of Staples Center. Outside the crypt. <laughs> the fucking crypto. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I agree with the number retirement for Dustin Brown, but man, you're you're giving him a statue, huh? Yeah, I don't I don't agree with the fuck I don't agree with the fucking statue. I don't I get he's like the first he's like the first captain to hoist the cup. Yeah. In so franchise the only history, the only yeah. stat he leads the team in all time is games played. And he will probably only hold it if Anze Kopitar doesn't play two seasons. He is 86 games above Kopitar. And they're one and two all time games played. How old's Kopitar? He, uh, so Dustin Brown's at 1,296. Kopitar's at 1,210. Uh, Kopitar, in terms of his age, is 34. He'll turn 35 on the 24th of August. Has that dude never missed a fucking game? Uh, let's see. 72 games in 07. 75, 47 in the lockout years. 79. He has not missed many games. Yeah, I was going to say. like, Yeah, he's, he's played the vast majority of games he was eligible for. Uh, but for Dustin Brown... Where is he in all-time goals for the Kings? He's in the top 10, but where is he? 10. Sixth. Six? Behind Bernie Nichols, Anze Kopitar, Dave Taylor, Marcel Dion, and Luke Robitaille. Where is he for assists? Eighth. Eighth. I mean, he's kind of up there, I guess. And in all time points, he's seventh for the club. He is one of their best players ever. He is or was the captain for those two cup winning teams in 2012 and 2014. But man, if anyone should get a statue... I'm looking at Anze Kopitar or Jonathan Quick before I'm looking at Dustin Brown. I get yeah. he was the captain, but I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's a weird choice. That's that's all I can leave it at. It's it wouldn't be my first choice. I I could see the argument, but the only way I think you're not going to get ridiculed for it is if when Quick and Kopitar retire, they also get a statue right next to him. And it's your, here's your LA Kings section. Let's remember this amazing era for the team. That's the only way. Because otherwise, yeah, it just, it doesn't, doesn't really sound right, does it? It doesn't. That's, that's weird. It is very <laughs> weird. Or one. as Sim would say, yeah, fuck it, stupid, fuck the Kings. <laughs> that's our Sim. <laughs> that's our buddy. Oh, God. Um, other things before we kind of get into the signings and wrap up the show, wanted to mention as well the AHL. Another relocation. Uh, to fans of the Stockton Heat, I feel your pain as someone who's lost their AHL team. The Stockton Heat have been relocated to Calgary, where they have become the Calgary Wranglers, meaning the Edmonton Oilers are now the only Canadian team without their AHL affiliate being located in the same province. Um, 
you know, kind of kind of sucks for Stockton. It's never really cool to see anybody lose their uh, lose their team. Um, but the Wranglers, like I like the logo. You know, it's the throwback to the uh, to the old Alberta logo or to the old Atlanta Flames logo. I know a lot of people were surprised they didn't you know, just outright use that logo. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. I do. I think it's pretty cool. I believe they're playing um, at the Stampede Corral which is like a multi it's a smaller multi-purpose venue that they yes do use um you know obviously for the for the uh for the the, the stampede itself and the the lovely festivities of of bulls and all of this stuff um but it does have a history of hosting other you know hockey teams like literally the initial Calgary Wranglers of the WHL played there from 77 to 87 uh, the Calgary Hitmen used it when the Saddle Dome was unavailable. So it, it is a stadium that's that's fit, you know, that's fit for it. And uh, I believe the capacity, yeah. yes, indeed, just to get that joke in there, is higher than where the uh, Arizona Coyotes will play. You know, Sorry, people Duke. just, they are just beat. speaking of the Wranglers, they are just beating that fucking dead horse, aren't they, with the Coyotes? Yeah, it's... <sighs> did did sports center tsa make that joke or because like i love to the guys over there but it just seems like whenever they can it just takes shots at arizona like that's all they have for content it's yeah. like <laughs> the coyotes am i right and it's like we we fucking get it guys we get it <laughs> What's yeah, the deal it's, with not our great, it's not a great fucking look oh it's smaller than some junior rank we know just Fucking let it go, though, man. We, we know it's small. <laughs> like, leave us Holy alone. Holy shit. It's not about the size of my tool, but how I use it. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just, exactly. fuck, I'm sick of the Coyotes shit, man. Just sick of it. I um, me too, honestly. I'm I just it's just like it's a low hanging fruit. It's like, man, like I can't wait till we can get like we have Shane we were gonna get Shane Wright, but we'll be back to another guy instead. Oh yeah, well you guys still have to play to five thousand fans. He'll it'll be a downgrade for him playing over there instead. It's like, dude, I'm just I'm just eating my lunch, man. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I just want lunch. I just want lunch. <laughs> God, so I ruined my own segue because I was going to go from talking about the Wranglers to the Calgary Flames as we get into talking about the signings that have happened over the past oh, yeah. week and a half. And thank God we didn't record on Wednesday because now we got something big to talk about. Last night, the news broke. The Flames have re-signed forward Jonathan Huberto, which is still super weird to say. He gets an eight-year deal, the full eight years, uh, at $10.5 million per starting after this season. Again, he is still signed for this upcoming year at five point nine million, and then it jumps up to ten and a half for eight years. Uh, he will be thirty years old when that contract starts, so potentially Jeez. the last few years could be a little bit rough. But Jonathan Huberto is one hell of a player, man. And the Flames, on top of that, did resign uh, RFA's Andrew Mangiapane three years at five point eight, which is great. And Oliver Sheelington at two years for two and a half. So their RFA business is done. Now the only thing that they have to worry about is what are they going to do with uh, UFA defender at the end of next year, Mackenzie Weger. But honestly, I think they're set up pretty damn well. Because Sean Monahan's deal is up at the end of this upcoming season. That's 6.375. We don't even know if he's going to play this year. And Milan Lucic is five and a quarter comes off the books at the end of this upcoming year as well. So they can afford these pay raises. They can afford to pay Mackenzie Weger if he wants to stay there. The Calgary Flames looked fucked. That is the only way to put it. When they lost Goodrow and it was announced that Kachuk was leaving. And look, I get it. You Goodrow and Kachuk, oh, well, we have... Huberto and Uyghur. You might prefer that first duo, but Calgary, they're not screwed. They're not. They've managed to keep Jonathan Huberto. Um, you know, I, I forget who it was that made the statement that I kind of ridiculed about Brad Treliving being one of the best GMs in the league, but you know, with the way that they've managed this, I don't know if he is one of the best, but he's certainly not shit. 
I I am certainly much more optimistic, as I'm sure Flames fans are in general, about the Flames right now. They they're in a good spot. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of I feel like the Canadian like whole like I don't know what it is, but just a lot of Canadian teams are getting stronger. I think they realize because they're in big opportunities to like remember like a few years ago, like no Canadian teams were even in the playoffs like at all. Yeah, that you're right. That wasn't that long ago that, yeah, no <laughs> Canadian teams were making the playoffs. Yeah, and that now, was like before they, they had the whole COVID rules. Now we have to have a Canadian team in there just so that way it's kind of fair for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, the, I mean, with the Canadian division, yeah. Like you look at the Canadian teams now. Okay, Montreal, no shot at making the playoffs. Zero. No fucking shot. But it's shot. by design. They've had that front office change, and yeah. they're on a good path. Toronto would be a disaster if they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. Edmonton, disaster if they didn't make the playoffs. Calgary, legitimate shot at making the playoffs. Um, while it didn't look like that would be the case, at this stage, we definitely know legitimate shot at making the playoffs. Like, they're in a yep. good spot. Uh, Vancouver, legitimate shot at making the playoffs. Ottawa, dare we say, legitimate shot at making the playoffs. And then there's Winnipeg, who's kind of in that middle ground, too. Honestly, I think you almost might have to put Winnipeg, like, below Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa, but above Montreal of like, we don't really know what the fuck you're doing. Like you don't have a horrible roster, but just what the fuck are you doing? Like that's Winnipeg. You're right doing now. good, sweetie. You're doing okay. <laughs> so Flames fans, you have the right to be hyped. This is looking damn good, especially if they keep Mackenzie Weger. And like I said, those big contracts coming off the books, they're looking good. Um, the Sharks re-signed defenseman Mario Ferraro. Four-year deal at 3.25. Much like Sin was worried about, though. Like, number one, that deal for Ferrara, uh, you know, we'll get his thoughts on it next week. Uh, I personally don't think it's that bad of a deal. But the Sharks are 1.2 million over the cap right now on Cap Friendly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they're over the cap. You got 2.7 million of retained Brent Burns and 2.4 million of dead cap which pretty much all comes from Martin Jones. Um, they they got rid of Brent Burns, and they are still over the cap. And this is with Cap Friendly having 12 forwards, 8 defenders, and 3 goalies. So that's not horrifically out of the question, but the thought is that all three of the goalies they're paying that are listed on Cap Friendly are making over $2 million. Right. So... Like, Reimer or Aiden Hill has to go before this season starts. Or you bury Aiden Hill? Like, they still have to make moves, but it's just astonishing. Like, you get rid of Brent Burns, granted you retain salary, but for the purpose of freeing up cap space, and yeah, you're still in cap hell at this stage. Like, absolute cap hell. Um, Jets fans, at least you're not the Sharks. You're, you're looking better than they again. are right now. It's holy shit. Holy. And they signed David Quinn as their head coach. I don't think we got to talk to Sin about that either. If somebody could do me a favor in the viewer question section, when I ask next week, bring up all of this stuff about the Sharks, please. I really want Sin's thoughts on all of it because there's just so much <laughs> that's constantly changing with this team. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Um, other signings, Jesper Bratt gets a one-year deal in New Jersey worth 5.45. Miles Wood got a one-year deal worth 3.2. Um, yeah, good for the Devils to, again, kind of keep that core intact. Like, they are right up to the cap right now. Um, so, yeah, their moves are pretty much done, unless Jonathan Bernie ends up on LTIR, but they don't have anybody to sign. So, another team that, you know, will certainly help to be in the playoff mix. John Klingberg. Signed a one-year deal in Anaheim for seven million, but according to Jeff Please. Merrick of Sportsnet, he apparently he and his camp turned down an eight-year deal with the Stars worth seven million per. Wow. And in terms of betting on yourself, I don't know, because another guy that signed in Carolina is Ryan Dezingle for one-year right. league min seven fifty k. And it wasn't all that long ago that Ryan Dezingle turned down three, four million bucks a season from Ottawa. He bet on himself. 
hate to see it, all intents and purposes, apparently a good dude. That bet, that gamble did not fucking pay off at all. Like, he did get a half-decent contract from Carolina, but yeah. So, I don't know. Klingberg is like full prove-it deal. I, I don't know how, if you're John Klingberg, you turn down eight years, seven million per and thought, oh, I'm going to get a better deal. I like honestly, if I was a Stars fan, I'd be like, oh, thank God, because I feel like that that deal wouldn't age very well. Yeah. Uh, crazy. <laughs> There's been some crazy, like weird moves. Uh, like, I don't I don't know how to predict uh, what's going on a lot in some divisions. I don't know what the Stars are doing. Like, they still got to sign Ottinger, too, like, don't they? Yeah, that was the word today is like they aren't close at all. Uh, they also let go of Michael Roffel, who was kind of like a bottom six de- uh, defense first uh, analytical darling. But yeah, they have $10 million, 10.3, and they haven't signed not only Ottinger, they still haven't signed Jason Robertson. Mm. Noted 125 points in 128 career games at 23 years old, Jason Robertson. Yeah, he's going to want money, and he's going to deserve that money, too. Like, like take a two-year bridge deal at, like, $3 million, and then that son of a bitch is getting paid, and rightfully mm-hmm. so. So, yeah. yeah, Stars fans, a little bit rough at the moment. Um, I mentioned Carolina. They also signed Ethan Bear, one-year deal, $2.2 million. Good for Ethan Bear. Uh, and New Jersey also uh, re-signed Jonas Siegenthaler uh, for five years at 3.4, starting after this upcoming season. Also a very good deal there. Um, other random moves, Danton Heinen back to Pittsburgh. Cheap as hell. Good deal. Donato, Ryan Donato went back to Seattle. Fine deal. Edmonton, one-year deal, $3 million for Jesse Pugliarvi. And two-year deal, $3.1 million for Kyler Yamamoto. Um, Edmonton currently $6 million over the cap. Which pretty much means once Clefbaum and Smith go to LTIR, they are cap compliant, but with no real space. So you better hope the team you got is good enough to get it done. But I still look at Edmonton, and once we get to our season previews this fall, I don't know for sure if I can bank on them being the cup favorite that they should be with the high-end talent that they have like Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and the best player of them all, Zach Hyman. <laughs> well, t- I had to. Like, they just put out Hi. stats about, like, what Zach Hyman, like, the, the charitable stuff that he had done, I think, already in Edmonton, plus his track record in Toronto. That guy's a gem. I mean, he's got NFT, so, like, he's kind of ruined it. Nah, never mind. Big piece of shit. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's still a good guy. He's doing a lot of good things. I'm glad to see you guys succeed, especially your former former Leaf. Just does good stuff. Uh, Capo Caco stays in New York, two year deal, two point one million. I think if you asked Rangers fans three years ago, like, oh, that's what you're going to pay Capo Caco, they're going to be like, that's a sweet deal. Little do they realize it's because his you know production hasn't been that. Second wow, with this big city. <laughs> wow, with this big city. <laughs> oh God, that that fucking video clip. God, he, lo- he looks like he's he held at gunpoint. He looks like he's legit held at gunpoint. Yeah, It's like when the Knicks try and sign anybody who doesn't want to be on the Knicks. <laughs> Don't you regret not coming regret to the, the Knicks? Knicks. <laughs> and it's like, yes, Kevin Durant does regret not coming to the Knicks <laughs> because he's on the Brooklyn Nets, a fate worse than death. Uh, <laughs> hey, yo, <God>. fuck Trey Young. <laughs> side, side talk. God damn it. What a... Oh, the best. It's the best. Uh, last two signings, Owen Tippett, two years, 1.5 in Philly. Why not? Uh, he was a part of the Drew return. And a Matthew Joseph, four-year deal worth just about $3 million in Ottawa. Also not bad. Not so, bad at all. A lot of signings I don't hate. But it brings us to the end of the show, our final talking point here. And again, don't have as many people to bounce this off of. But The Athletic released their annual article of worst contracts in the league. This was the top 10. And what I want to know from you and what I wanted to know from Sin, do you agree, bad deal, or no, it's a good deal? Number 10, Ben Sherratt, now with Detroit, four years at $4.75 million. 
bad she, deal, good deal, somewhere in between? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that that a four contract on that kind of team's kind of like you're kind of staying, you're kind of knowing the team's going to be really, really good for the next few years. So you're kind of like setting in being like, okay, I'll be here for, a, I'll be here for a little bit. I'll catch, I'll ride the wave a little bit for a while. It's a, it's an okay deal. I I drift closer to bad deal, but I view it as like, okay, it's not the worst deal, but it's not great. Number nine, Nick Suzuki in Montreal, eight years, 7.9 million, basically. Wait, you trying to hit the cap floor now? Like, I think it's a little, I think it's a little bit too much for Suzuki. Yeah, I mean, yeah. based on like, oh, we're paying him for what he's going to be. It's not that bad, but for now, and I'm pretty sure that's what like their model represented. Um, for now, it's it's a bit pricey, and especially too, it's long term. So it's like, okay, yeah. you got to keep hoping that he continues to develop into what you think he can be. But for what he is right now, it's a bit pricey. So I can see why it's on the list, but. In theory, not the worst deal in the world. Number eight, Zach Wierenski. Six-year deal, $9.5 million. Uh, I would take Zach Wierenski on the Boston Bruins for that for that money. Uh, I'm much yeah. happier to have Charlie McAvoy on the deal he's on. But, I again, I can see why it would end up on one of these worst lists. But, no, I would I would easily take Zach Wierenski on that contract. I think he's a great player. That's a, that's a, very, that's a very decent fair price, I think, for, for Wierenski. Number seven he just likes being there that too. Right. Like he was one of the original, like, yeah, I'm good. And I want to stay here at least in recent memory. Yeah. Number seven, Eric Carlson, five years left at $11.5 million. No, yeah. he he's nowhere near where he used to be. And I don't think he's valuable for that kind of money. Yeah. Everyone knows it's like you, you think of like, Oh, the worst contract. He's going to be on that list. Colton Pareko, eight years, six and a half million. Uh, I know a lot of Blues fans who are like, yeah, he, he kind of hasn't taken that next step to being like the guy. It could still work out, though. But again, eight years, like I could see why it would end up on a list like this. But, you know, I like if Colton Pareko is playing at his best, yeah, six and a half million is not a problem. Yeah, but how often is like your best, right? Not like, often it's not enough. Consider- yeah, that's the thing. I don't. I don't think it's six five worthy for eight years. But if it's like a longevity thing, I guess. But yeah. yeah. Number five, Darnell Nurse's new eight year deal at nine point two five million. Dude got paid. He good he, for he Darnell paid. Nurse. <laughs> yeah, he got fucking paid. But now your team's over the cap, so it's like, is it a good deal? Or is it a bad deal? Because it puts your team in a bad position. I'd say it's a bad deal because you want to get someone like Darnell Nurse signed for less than that. Not saying he's not worth it in a sense, but ideally that's the type of player that takes the pay cut to allow you to spend more money helping out the likes of McDavid and Dreisaitl so that they're not playing with Josh Archibald and uh, fucking God, what was his name? The dude that tried to pull some bullshit, um, God, his name's escaping me. Ah, there was a dude at the at the end of the series. He was a centerman, I think. Damn it! Hold on. Twenty twenty. I need to properly shit on this guy as not being good enough. Damn it, Dylan Holloway. Not Dylan Holloway. Brad Malone. Brad Malone, man. Playing on the Oilers squad in a playoff game. What is that shit? God damn it. Oh my god. I haven't heard that name in a while. Brad Malone. Number four. Brad Mark Lee. Edward Vlasic with the San Jose Sharks. Four years, seven million left. He's ancient. Yeah, this is fucking abysmal. Fossil. <laughs> Team legend, but horrible contract. Fossil. Number three. Jeff Skinner. Five years left at nine million. Yeah pretty bad yeah if he can get back to that ridiculous pace he was on not as bad and he wasn't that bad this season but yeah he's he's overpaid and that's a lot of term Mm -hmm. number two seth jones eight years nine and a half million 
You knew he'd be on this list. And he should yeah. be on this list. Good for him getting yeah. the money. He, he somehow earned the reputation of, yeah, he's worth that. He's not. He's really not. <laughs> Brutal. Again, number like, one. It Go seems ahead. like half of these are cap hit kind of things. It seems like half of these are like, we got to hit the floor. Hit the money button. Like, <laughs> Hit the money button. I like it. Yeah. Uh, and the final deal, the worst, according to The Athletic, is Tyler Sagan, five years at just under $10 million per season left. And Sagan will technically be the highest paid player in the NHL this upcoming season in terms of total money spent as opposed to cap hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Sagan, you know, Sagan and Ben are continued uh, or continuing to essentially be called out by their ownership for not being good enough. And not doing well enough. So uh, I don't, you know what I think it is? I think with Tyler Sagan, you know, like he doesn't fit with the culture. Mm. Mm. (laughs) I think, I think he's spending a lot more time uh, doing stuff with dude. Perfect in Dallas. than he is like practicing with the team. I don't know. Like clearly he's there, but it just, maybe he just needs a, a fresh like look and management won't trade him because they don't have any value for him, mm. and they can't set them down because they'll get they'll get claimed off of waivers probably. Like it's yeah. a weird it's weird. Like teams don't want him because of because the way he's at. He clearly wants to leave. Like if, mm. if this is your kind of level of play at like that big of a cap hit, it, it's kind of like a sign that you want to like something to happen. Pretty much, yeah. And uh, with that, I think we're good. For this week's show, again, we want to thank everyone for listening and for watching. Sin should be back with us next week. Uh, God, it's the doldrums of August, so I can't imagine we'll have that much to talk about, but we'll try. We'll we'll see what there is to actually talk about. And in the meantime, what do you got going on here uh, in in August? How the fuck is it August? It's August. What the hell happened? Yeah. I can't believe it's August. I think the weeks are going to go by even slower now that there's not a podcast every two weeks, uh, mm. two podcasts every week. Uh, so what I'm doing is I revamp my schedule. Uh, Wednesdays are like the day where I'm just kind of like chilling and doing nothing. So yeah. Monday, Tuesdays, Thursday, Fridays, two o'clock PM. Cause I somehow open up a PM slot. You can catch me streaming, Playing whatever, I had just like a hiccup kind of stuck in my throat. It was not good. Um, but you can catch me the streaming twitch.tv slash Endo Mills. I'm on Twitter where I yell about things at people and my opinions get ignored and I go old man yells at cloud uh, over on Twitter, uh, Endo Mills. And uh, yeah, that's what I got going on. What do you got going on, Mr. Fiance? I know the recently engaged as crazy as that is. Um, we are, like I said, probably going to look to try to play some F1 this weekend. If we have enough people other than that on stream, at least twitch.tv forward slash 2 24, where else would it be? Uh, we've been playing a lot of NCAA basketball 10, finally turning the UMaine black bears basketball program into something respectable. Uh, all of that will start to be uploaded to my secondary YouTube channel as well. The T O T W O G I E 24. Of course, there's still the main Tugi24 channel. So I had an update video out for those that missed it about like, hey, what? where's the contest? What are you doing? Um, yeah, and when I are getting back to hopefully being able to be a little bit more consistent with the videos that I uh, that I want to make for that main channel. And um, yeah, shit, man. Just enjoying life. How nice is that? Enjoying <laughs> life. Very, very nice. One thing, too, is there may be a very special video coming somewhere onto the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to say it takes two. There you go. With that, everybody, thank you for listening again. Shout out to Manscaped. Use code TUGI at checkout. And we'll see you next week.